Okay, so let's start going through our presentation for the day. This is our agenda. We will be looking at an overview of HTML, what it stands for, what it means, and some reasons why you should learn it too. Then we'll be exploring four key concepts that make up the basics of HTML. These concepts are tags, HTML structure, nesting, and indenting. After learning about those concepts, we'll demonstrate the knowledge we just learned in an activity called Assignment 1.1 on Replit. After I go through this presentation, I will be guiding you through Assignment 1.1 step-by-step. HTML overview. What does it stand for? Hypertext Markup Language. It's a bit of a mouthful, but remember, HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. But what is it? It's a programming language used to create web pages, but it's not the only programming language used to create web pages. There are many other programming languages too. One, for example, is called CSS, which we will learn later on. CSS changes the way things look on the internet. The HTML is also another way for people to communicate with the computer and the internet. In other words, you're also using HTML right now, whether you know it or not. Even by watching this video, you're most likely using HTML code or a combination of HTML and other programming languages too. Lastly, everything online is made up of HTML code. That means whether you're accessing the internet on your phone, your laptop, your TV, your gaming console, or anything else that connects to the internet, you're most likely also using HTML code. You just don't know it yet. So let's explore some reasons to learn HTML code. First and foremost, you can learn how to create your own website, which is why you're watching these videos. But you can also do a lot more with HTML code too. HTML code is considered a first step to learning other languages. HTML code is also known as a gateway language, meaning that once you learn HTML as your first programming language, it'll be much easier to learn any other languages along the way. HTML code is fun and easy to learn. Because HTML has to do with the internet, it's also very visual. So as soon as we write HTML code, we can also see it too. Also, HTML code teaches skills in design, organization, logic, and creativity. So when you're writing out HTML code, you're not just writing out lines of code, but you're also designing the code too. Think about if you were to make your own website right now. You don't just write a bunch of lines of code. You have to think about how you would want it structured, the layout, and overall the design. So let's go through some examples of HTML in real life. The first one being social media. I'm sure many of you use or have heard or even seen TikTok videos. They're pretty popular. But did you know that TikTok videos are also made out of HTML code? All social media sites use HTML code. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. But how and why? Because it's connected to the internet and anything on the internet is made up of HTML code. Second, let's go through some stores. So I know everyone likes to buy stuff. So some web stores, probably the most popular one, Amazon, or for those who have iPhones or Androids, there's the Apple Store, the Google Play Store. You're accessing apps on your phone, right? You're connected to the internet. That means you're also using HTML code. Or if you're buying clothes online, even if the store is a physical place, the online store connects to the internet. And that means it also has HTML code inside of it. So think about if you ever want to open up your own store one day, your own clothing brand, maybe you want to sell um, different products, or even just have people visit your site, like a reviewing site or something like that. Imagine something like Yelp. Anything that people can use or have access to, you need HTML. So if you want to design your own store, you're going to have to learn HTML code. Also, another example is entertainment. So we have a few different streaming sites that are pretty popular. I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of Netflix. I know most of you probably have also access to Disney Plus and Hulu too. These streaming services, the way that they bring content from the 
the cloud or different servers around the world right to your phone or your TV screen or your laptop, any of those things, those are processing through HTML code. Similarly, gaming also is somewhat similar like streaming. If you're playing online multiplayer in a game like Minecraft or Roblox or even Fortnite, you're most likely using HTML code too because you're connected to the internet. If you're connected to the internet, you need a way for content somewhere else to come to your device. So if you're playing a gaming console, you need to be able to access servers to play multiplayer. And so you're using HTML code. Now, let's get into some HTML tags. This is our first concept of HTML. Tags are very essential to HTML. In HTML, we use tags to tell the web browser how to format and display the content. We can specify what type of content, whether it's text, media, meaning pictures, or images, videos, GIFs. Everything in HTML is written inside of a tag. This is very important. This means that whenever you write anything in HTML, you always have to write a tag first. For example, right here on the Dreams for Schools website, this chunk of code is actually translated right here. This text is all written in code, but it appears visual for us. It appears nice and clean and organized, but we can only organize it because we're using HTML code. So how do we write these tags if we need them for every step of the way when we use HTML code? A tag is made by using the special characters, the left angle bracket and the right angle bracket. You may have seen those before in your keyboard. These are gonna become very, very important when we use tags because all tags use the left angle bracket and the right angle bracket. On this slide, you'll see a picture of a keyboard. In order to use these left angle bracket and the right angle bracket, you'll have to hold either the left shift or the right shift. Then once you're holding those, you can click the left angle bracket or the right angle bracket. If you don't hold shift and you try to access or click the button for the left angle bracket and the right angle bracket, you'll actually end up with either a comma or a period and you won't get what you really want. But how do you know something is a tag? If it has the special characters, the left angle bracket and the right angle bracket around it, it is a tag. Simple, right? Telling you, tags are your friend. So all you have to do is hold that shift button and then hit the left angle bracket or the right angle bracket. But we'll get some practice later on. There are two types of tags. The first type of tag being a container tag. A container tag has an opening and closing with text or other tags inside. This means that if we have an opening tag and a closing tag, we can put stuff in between. Container might be a difficult word, but think about a box. In a box, you put stuff in it like a container. We'll go through some container examples in just a second, but I want to point out that notice right here we have h we have left angle bracket html right angle bracket meaning our opening tag then we have our left angle bracket notice this forward slash right here html then right angle bracket to mean a closing tag so what's the real difference between these opening and closing tag well visually we can see that the closing tag has this special forward slash this forward slash is only on closing tags. We don't include them on opening tags. Think about these container tags as a pair. You always have an opening and a closing, but there's another type of tag right now that we'll get into that doesn't have a closing tag. The second type of tag is an empty tag. An empty tag looks like an opening tag and behaves like an opening tag too, but it does not have a closing tag associated with it. For example, there's one tag that we'll be using later called line break. In line break, there's no opening or no closing. There's just one tag for it. It does look like an opening though, but 
it has some optional characters too. By looking at this image, we can see that we need the left angle bracket, the HTML element itself, which is this text, not the text, but which is the name of the line bracket itself. And then we also need this right angle bracket. But optionally, we can have a space right here and a forward slash. From now on, whenever I'm using an empty tag, I'll be using this model right here. I'll be using the left angle bracket, the HTML element type, which in this case is line break, and then a space, a forward slash, and then a right angle bracket. But again, it can work perfectly fine if you just use the left angle bracket, the name of the element, and the right angle bracket. Now, let's visit the HTML structure. This is going to be key for how we displace content through HTML code. All web pages have the default tag, left angle bracket, exclamation point, doc type, HTML, right angle bracket. But what does that mean? This tag is a special tag. At the beginning of all of our HTML code, we'll always include this single tag. It tells the browser that the language we're writing code in is HTML. If we didn't include this tag, it wouldn't really hurt us, but we should always include it anyways, because this way we know that we're also writing an HTML code. Later on, when we learn CSS, we'll know whether we're using CSS or not based on this tag, because this tag can help us know whether we're writing an HTML or CSS. To build any web page, you'll need four container tags. These four container tags are essential for every activity you'll do and everything written in HTML. So first we have our HTML opening tag. Then we have our HTML closing tag. These dots right here just means that there's stuff in between, which we'll get to in a little bit. But just imagine that there's other stuff written right here. Then we'll have a head tag, an opening head tag to be exact, some stuff in between, and then a closing head tag. Do you notice a pattern yet? Because these are container tags, they all are in pairs, which means that they all have one opening tag and one closing tag. And again, an opening tag is a left angle bracket followed by the element type, which in this one right here is title, and a right angle bracket, some stuff in the middle, and then we get we have a closing tag, which looks almost like the opening tag, but it has a forward slash. And you will always need to put this forward slash. If this forward slash isn't here, you're gonna run into some issues and the code's not gonna appear right. Lastly, we have this essential tag called the body tag. This is an opening body tag, some stuff in the middle, and then a closing body tag. But note that everything that appears visually on your website or anything online is placed inside of a body tag. So let's look at a visual example for some structure. Right here, notice that we have our doc type that we mentioned earlier. This is telling our browser, and we can be using any browser, right? We could be using Google Chrome. We'd be using Safari made by Apple. We could also be using Microsoft Edge and any other type of browser, whether it's Firefox or anything like that. But this will tell your browser that you want to write an HTML code. This line right here doesn't affect your code at all, but you should still have it nonetheless. Right here on line two, notice these are lined up. We have one, two, three, all the way to 10, right? Those will become helpful and they'll become useful for us to use later when we're trying to find errors in our code. So pay attention to the lines too. Right here though, for the line number two, we have HTML code. But where is the closing tag for HTML code? If we follow this red line right here, we go down and we go all the way left, we see that the closing tag is right here. But why is it so far away? Let's get to that in a second. But remember, all container tags need an opening and a closing tag. And right now, we're using all container tags. So 
for our second tag, head tag. The opening head tag is here on line three. And we go all the way to the right, all the way lower, and all the way to the left. Right here is our closing heading tag, header tag. We call it a head tag. Then we have, of course, our title, and then some stuff in the middle, maybe, and a closing tag. But I think you get the idea of this. So again, we always have an opening and a closing tag, and then again for body. But why are they spaced out? We'll get to that in just a second. But notice before we move on that all of these pairs, they're all vertically aligned with each other. In other words, this HTML opening tag lines up exactly with our closing HTML tag. If we look at any other tag, we have our head tag right here. Even though there's some space right here, we also have our closing tag line up exactly with our head tag. Same thing with title, they're aligned. And again, same thing with body, they're aligned. So the HTML tag. Every HTML document begins and ends with an HTML tag. This tells the browser that the following document is an HTML file. Head tag. So the head tag contains the title of the document along with general information. This may include the author, copyright, keywords, and or description of what appears on the page. Our title tag is actually inside or nested in the head tag. It describes the title of a page. You know tabs on a computer or any browser? When you're making new tabs, they all have different titles, right? And they all relate to the website that you're on. Specifically, those tabs describe the page you're on. So if you move, let's say on YouTube to different channels, to different um, videos, your title tag will change based on which exact page you're on. Again, the title appears at the very top of the browser page. And right here, this is the home page for YouTube, just YouTube. But again, if you go to a different channel, you click on a different video, you'll probably see that the title changes right here. But then when we're using it, we can actually set the name of our own title for our own website, which will become a powerful tool later. The most powerful of all is the body tag. Like I just mentioned a few moments ago, everything inside of the body tag, the opening and closing body tags, that's what appears on the internet. That's what you can visually see. So on our website, whenever you want something to appear, let's say like a video or an image or some text, maybe a couple sentences or two, all of that's gonna be inside of our body tags. Let's get into our third concept called nesting. Nesting means to place one thing inside of another thing. This word was used a little bit before. Think of nesting as meaning inside. In HTML, nesting means to place one tag inside of another tag. So when we think about it, let's use some real life examples. Earlier, I mentioned a box. That's like a container, right? Well, what if we want to put more things inside of that box? Let's think about that first as a backpack. So a backpack is a container, right? It holds stuff. You, took, you put stuff in it, but you could also put stuff that contains or nests other stuff. So for example, in your backpack right here, you could also put other containers such as a folder or even something like a pencil case, right? Also, you could put um, paper inside of this folder right here. So in other words, we have multiple nested things. We have our backpack, our folder, and then some paper. Paper goes inside the folder, folder goes inside the backpack. In other words, to say it in a programming way for HTML, we say that inside a backpack, the folder is inside or nested, and then paper is nested inside of that folder. So think of those two words as synonyms for each other. Something that's inside of something else is also nested. We'll be using the term nested a lot. 
So don't worry if you don't pick it up right away. But let's look at one other example. Right here, we have Russian dolls. So looking at my cursor right here, this is the smallest doll out of these five. We could put this small doll inside of this slightly bigger doll. And then you could put this doll inside of this one and so on. This one could fit in this one and this one could fit in that one, right? In a way, these four smaller ones can all fit inside of the big one or they're all nested inside. But there's an order to it, right? The ones that are slightly bigger than each other, they go inside the even bigger ones. So HTML requires tags to be nested. In other words, everything that we write in HTML, all the different tags that we use, even these four right here, these four container tags, they're all nested at some point or another, except for the HTML tag. Everything we want to be written in HTML has to be between our container tag of HTML. We have a head tag, the title, their closing tags, and then the body tags. But like right here, what it says, notice the body tag is not nested inside the head tag. This is important. So right here, we have our head and we drop down lower. Closing tag inside that is a title. But head, the pair of the opening and closing head tags, they're also vertically aligned with our body tags, with our opening and closing body. The head tag and title tag don't actually have that much content inside of them. We're not gonna actually be writing that much in there, but we'll be writing most of our code inside our body tag because that's what we want to visually appear. But let's read the definition first. The number of spaces before the beginning of text on a line. By definition, a single indent is one tab, which is a key on the left side of your keyboard, or four spaces. So you could hit the space bar four times. But in our software for Replit, if we hit tab, it should automatically do four spaces for us. So we can just hit one tab without having to do four spaces every single time. But when do we indent? So every time we nest something, we also indent it. But why? Let's look at our example right here where everything's nested inside. We need nesting because this tells HTML the order of what we want to write and display on our sites or anything online. We indent as well because it makes nesting easier to see. Let's look at an example of how bad that looks right here. This is bad indenting. Because if we look at this, it's really hard to see the nesting. It kind of looks like everything is nested, of course, like inside of each other, but it's hard to tell what is inside of what exactly. But if we look at our good indenting example, we can see that for every following nested tag, they're all separated by four spaces or one tab again. So right here, we have one tab of space. And again, make sure that your body tag is not nested inside of head because body and head are actually on the same line technically. It makes it easier to read when we indent. It also makes it easier to just visually see any errors, any random spaces we may have placed, and it's, it provides a good structure to our code. Now we'll be transitioning to our first assignment, assignment 1.1 on Revlet. Let's demonstrate the knowledge we just learned by completing an activity on Replit. On Replit, there is an assignment called 1.1 in our classroom. This assignment will test the knowledge of the four key concepts that we just went over. But first, make sure that you've watched video one and have made your own account. This is important because if you watch video one, Video one is a guide to making your own account and also signing up to join the classroom. If you haven't joined the classroom, then you won't have access to assignment 1.1. When you sign up to Replit, this is the classroom that you should join or have joined by now. If you have successfully joined our classroom, click on that and then Replit will take you to the assignments page. As you can see right here in video one, you should have already completed 1.0. 
HTML hello world. HTML introduction to HTML. Again, let's go through this and let's take a look around. So in here, we have a lot of stuff to look at. This may seem really overwhelming at first, but let's break it down step by step. First thing you want to do before even really looking at the words or the content is you want to change your settings. It's kind of like when you get a laptop or a phone or any device, you want to make it custom, right? Well, let's agree on a few standards that we have for when we're doing this. See these three vertical dots over here next to back to classroom? Do not click back to classroom, but click the three vertical dots. When you click these, they open up different settings right here. You can choose to have your theme either light, where it's white like this, or dark. Personally, I will be using dark for all of these assignments because it is easier to read that way. Also, your font size may be different than mine. It may be more normal, which is really hard to see. So if you're like me and that's too much of a pain to see, go ahead and click huge, which is what I have. Next, remember I talked about indenting? Well, if you're indenting type, you want this to be tabs. So one tab, four spaces. Right here, key binds, you can leave as default. Wrap, you can leave as soft wrap. And autocomplete, it may be disabled, but you should always have that enabled. It will make life a lot easier. To close your settings, again, just hit the three vertical dots. Let's ignore this left half for right now, and let's focus on the right half. So right here, we have an activity 1.1. Notice, this may be a little bit hard to read, but if you have a mouse or a touchpad, if you have a touchpad, you can space out your fingers on a touchpad to zoom in like I am right now. If you have a mouse, you can try using scroll or different shortcut keys. Even in your browser, there may, there may be a zoom level that you can adjust to zoom in so the text is easier to read. So for sake of convenience, I will zoom in my text just so it's easier for you to read too. Right here, we see three parts. We have part A, part B, part C. These are the instructions. Part A, write the correct closing tags for title, body, and HTML. But what does that mean? What is part A? If these are our instructions right here, just this section right here, if we look at our code to the left, this is HTML. We can see that this is called index.html. And then if we see our next line that has text in it, this right here means part A, practice using the closing tags. So this part A right here, where it says to write the correct closing tags for title, body, and HTML, this correlates to this part right here in our code. So we're not editing this exactly, but if we look at the rest of the lines, we can see that there's similar HTML code that we just learned. By the way, you may have noticed by now is that, whoa, why is there a bunch of words and text right here? We'll explore these a little bit later on, but these are called comments. You can tell these are comments because these are grayed out. They almost look like the same color as our doc type, but they're not as special as doc type. Comments help us describe things that we're writing to help us identify something that we're stuck on. Think of them as like personal notes. We wrote these notes or comments because these are going to help you complete the activity. Just know that these commented lines do not affect your code. And instead, they're going to help you complete these the parts for the whole activity. So right here, if we have part A, write the correct closing tags for title, body, HTML. If this is saying that we need to write closing tags for these three other tags or element types, then let's look at where we should be writing our closing tags. Remember, all the closing tags are vertically aligned with each other. So if we have an HTML tag here, the thing that's vertically aligned, meaning up and down, is going to be all the way right here. We have two angle brackets already here, a left and a right angle bracket. 
if we read the comments right here, it, it actually helps us even further. It says, write a closing tag for HTML in between the brackets on line 15. Forward slash. So forward slash HTML. But what if you didn't know that? What if you got stuck? What if you got lost? Well, there's a big chunk of the screen I still haven't explored yet. All of these things are everything that I just went over in the presentation. So if you happen to get stuck, you can refer to these sections down here. So if this is called part A, and our assignment right here says to do part A for practice, we're going to look at part A again. This part A is going to go over what I already went over again. And it should help you with anything you'll need to complete this part A. This is also the same for part B. If you have no idea what's going on here, if we look at part B up here, these are our directions. And then we can go follow, we can look down. So everything in between this giant line right here up until part C, which is here, everything between is going to help us with nesting. So feel free to revisit those. Don't feel bad about asking for help. We all need help to learn something new. So if we were to complete these, we have a closing tag right here. Going back to part A, part A right here on line eight, write the closing tag for that title in between the brackets on line nine. So where do we do it? Line nine. First thing, forward slash, forward slash. What are we closing? Closing tag title. Let's look at our next one. This comment right here, this is a closing tag for head. So it's already done for us. So we can ignore this closing tag. This is an opening body. Where is our closing for the body? Well, if we read the comment on line 12, it reads, write a closing tag for body in between the brackets on line 13. Forward slash body. Looks good to me. All opening tags have a matching closing tag now. Let's go to part B. Given these tags, fill in the empty tags for each code segment to properly nest the code. So we'll be making the code go inside of something. Part B right here shows three different segments of code, just like it said right here. We need to fill in the segments of code to properly nest. So we're given two closing tags right here for our first code segment. All that really matters at the end of the day is nesting. Indenting makes it look nicer, but functionally, nesting is what makes it really work. So if we think about what's the first tag that we always start off with when we're writing an HTML, HTML, right? If we look back at our part A that we wrote correctly, we can see right here that the first tag that we use for an opening tag is HTML. So if we go to part B now, let's write HTML. So what's something inside of or nested inside of HTML tags? The head. So if we have a closing head right here, what do you think we need to match it, to pair it up with? An opening head. So again, for this second code segment, we have HTML, right? If we're looking at the second code segment right here. What opening tag do we have that we don't have a closing tag for yet? Body. So closing tag with a forward slash, B-O-D-Y, body. Moving on to the third and final code segment. This one's a little bit trickier because we have three tags per side, or three opening and three closing, meaning three pairs, ultimately. So what goes in between HTML and title? So right here, we have an opening head tag. Now that we know our first three opening tags, it should be easy to finish our closing tags. So if this is inside, we need a pair for that, which is our forward slash title. So now we have title and closing, closing title and closing head. The only one we're really missing is HTML, because HTML is always on the most outside. So that was part B. Part C, all the opening tags are correctly indented. So if you look at part C, it says right here, the, all of the opening tags, which means the ones that do not have the forward slash, these are all correct 
for indenting. Tap should work for four spaces, or you can manually do four spaces yourself. But we don't have to mess with our opening tags. So no HTML, no head, no title, and no body. These three are all correctly where they should be. But notice how closing title, closing head, closing body, closing HTML, these are all out of place. Visually, they're a mess. <laughs> Let's be real. We can't really understand what's happening here. Let's fix our indenting, which is what the rest of part C says to do. So again, all of the opening tags are correctly indented. Checks that out, got it. Fix the indentations for the closing tags by creating or deleting spaces in front of the tags. So we don't wanna delete the actual tags, but we only want to create or delete spaces in front of the tags. This way we can vertically align them with their opening tags. Right here, title is out of place, but the opening tag is correct. So if I hit one tab, boom, perfect, already done. That was pretty fast. I hit backspace, it's gonna go back to where it was originally. Or without hitting tab, I could use four spaces. So hit spacebar four times. One, two, three, four. But again, tab is easier to use. Right here, we have head. This one is aligned with HTML, which is not correct. It needs to be aligned with the opening head. Perfect. That was just one tab that was all we needed. Closing body tag is further out than the opening body tag. Similar to the HTML closing tag. It's further out than the HTML opening tag itself. So instead of adding tabs, we're actually gonna be deleting spaces or deleting tabs, but they're really just deleting spaces. So we hit delete once, we might have to hit it multiple times to make it perfectly aligned with our body. You can also tell because this little line appears right here. You can barely see it, but it's a little bit faint. So now if we wanna fix our HTML, we do backspace, backspace, backspace. Is it right? It's aligned with other tags, but where's our opening HTML? Here, it's our outermost tag, right? The one that's not nested. So if this closing tag is also not nested and it has the same amount of spaces as our opening HTML tag, then it needs to be all the way to the left. Now it has zero spaces and it aligns with HTML. We completed the activity and we demonstrated we know how to use opening and closing tags. And we understand the difference between indenting and nesting. In summary, every container tag has an opening and closing, but these four pairs, in total eight tags, but four pairs, pairs meaning two, these four pairs are essential. We need them in every single assignment and every single HTML file you write in or out of this classroom. For part B, we fixed the code segments so we nested correctly the things that are inside of each other versus the things that are outside of each other. In part C, we correctly indented or um, we fix the indentation by creating or deleting spaces or tabs. So this way all of our closing tags are vertically aligned with our opening tags, which is very visually important. So now that you're done with that, feel free to rewatch the video. Remember we have the help section underneath below the parts. But most of all, thank you for watching.